Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the carbon cycle. Um, pretty important cycle given that we are carbon-based life forms. Right? So let's start with a very basic diagram. Uh, a lot of the carbon that we'll consider is in the form of carbon dioxide, which is found in the atmosphere. That's a gas. And that gas is taken up through the process of photosynthesis and by plants on land, but also by phytoplankton or algae in the oceans. And then that carbon dioxide is converted into organic molecules, glucose and then others. And that can go through the food chain to consumers and, and whatnot. As organisms use glucose and other organic molecules to fuel their activities, they release that um, CO2 back into the atmosphere. We also sometimes in the incomplete or inor anaerobic digestion, we release another form of carbon, which is in a gas, into the atmosphere. That's methane. You might be familiar with that. Um, another major thing that can happen is that as organisms die or release organic waste, that can go into the soil. Decomposition does release a lot of carbon dioxide, but uh, decomposition that is anaerobic can release more, more methane. And um, if decomposition doesn't quite happen in the land and sediments build up, um, there can be geologic changes that happen to that organic material, which ultimately causes the formation of these fossil fuels. So oil, natural gas, and coal are all carbon-based molecules that come from organic materials. And those can be burned, and we get a lot of energy out of them, just the way we get a lot of energy from the oils and the, the fats and the carbohydrates and the proteins in our food. We get oil, we get energy from those fossil fuels. And as with um, respiration, when we combust that for energy, we release a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Another thing to be aware of is that certain types of organisms take a lot of the carbon dioxide and the carbon in their food and they produce shell and so calcium carbonate has carbon in it and that can be part of rock um, which can ultimately go through the rock cycle and if that gets heated up can be released through volcanic activity um, the, the carbon dioxide will be released so that's uh, an interesting way in which the carbon cycle intersects with the rock cycle. So the oceans do have a very large role in the carbon cycle. That's what I want to focus on in this diagram. Um, in addition to phytoplankton absorbing carbon dioxide and using it for photosynthesis, the oceans actually absorb just carbon dioxide. It, it dissolves straight into the water at the surface. And because of the mixing slow but, but steady mixing of oceanic waters, um, carbon can make its way, carbon dioxide dissolved in the water can make its way down into the deep ocean. And so the deep ocean is considered a sink um, for carbon in the carbon cycle. The sediments that form that have um, both inorganic and organic carbon, so that shell or dead materials, those can also cause carbon dioxide, excuse me, cars, cause carbon to end up sort of stored away for a long period of time. And so we can talk about certain cycles within the carbon cycle that are long-term cycles, that the deeper oceanic and the sediment and rock elements to the carbon cycle are very, very long in terms of the processes that take place. And that's in contrast with the kinds of quicker um, photosynthesis, respiration, movement of carbon between the atmosphere and living organisms. And that's a very fast cycle. Both of those are naturally parts of the carbon cycle. And what worries scientists is when we take something that is supposed to be a long-term storage, like fossil fuels, carbon that is in the, uh, the rock, and we start burning that and adding that into a quicker cycle of 
making carbon dioxide available for plants and also to be absorbed in the oceans. Another element that's important to note about the carbon cycle, especially in terms of how humans impact it, are what we do in terms of land use. So uh, a lot of people can see how if we take trees, the bulk of which is made out of carbon, you know, think about wood as a very dense carbon-based material, uh, if we're taking that out of an ecosystem and replacing it with agriculture, then we are definitely changing the rate at which carbon dioxide is taken out of the air and then stored up for at least you know, 100 years. The other thing people don't realize is that some of the changes that we make in terms of our land use can also alter the amount of carbon that's available in the soil because if we're changing the microbes and the climate for organisms in the soil, then rates of decomposition may change. Uh, the other thing we find is that soils may hold on to a lot of uh, organic material and sometimes that does not get decomposed very quickly, for example in peat bogs or in permafrost in the Arctic. And in other situations we have um, gases, especially methane, that gets trapped in soils and as we're concerned about climate change altering the rate of decomposition or causing uh, more storms to kick up and unsettle the soils in the, uh, the coastal regions or we're worried about permafrost melting. All of those kinds of land use changes or land changes can change the amount of the rate at which carbon dioxide and methane are being added to the atmosphere. And so these are a couple of different ways in which we're impacting the carbon cycle um, and we really need to consider uh, how to manage that long term.